There is a secret female disciple that Jesus told the secret of existence, but that secret and her role as Christ's most loved disciple who he kissed has been completely erased from the Bible and the reason why is unbelievable. The secret of reality and the power of women have been suppressed by the church. I'm going to show you what the church doesn't want you to know the truth about the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Now, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene is an important gospel to a group of Christians known as Gnostics. The word Gnostic comes from the Greek word for knowledge, and the Gnostic Christians claim to know secret knowledge and the true teachings of Jesus Christ. But the Gnostics were declared heretics by the church and their books, including the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, were burned, and anyone caught with them was put to death. So who was Mary Magdalene? What was the secret of existence that Jesus told her? And why was the church so determined to destroy this information? In many of these banned books, Mary Magdalene is portrayed as Jesus Christ's most beloved disciple, who he told the secret of existence and the only one who truly understood his teachings. In another banned gospel, the Gospel of Philip, she's described as Christ's companion and the one he loved the most who he kissed on the mouth. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene describes how she tries to tell the other disciples the secret that Jesus revealed to her, but the disciples Andrew and Peter, they become angry and say they don't believe Mary because she's a woman. What Jesus revealed to Mary is shocking, and it shows that reality is not at all what it seems, and that even space itself can be conquered. More on that later. But some of the disciples couldn't believe that Jesus would reveal this to a woman instead of them. But before I can tell you what this secret of existence is that Jesus revealed to Mary, you need to know one of the reasons that the church hated the Gospel of Mary Magdalene and the rest of the Gnostic books. By the way, my channel is about bringing knowledge of existence and consciousness to everyone, so help me spread this information by hitting like and subscribe now. Evidence suggests that the church wanted to de-emphasize the role that women played and create a patriarchal religion. Now we see this clearly in the Bible, specifically in the New Testament, where it says that women aren't allowed to teach, that they must remain quiet, and that they're lesser than men and must submit to their husbands in everything. They're blamed for committing the first sin by eating from the tree of knowledge, but that they can save themselves through childbirth some pretty terrible stuff. But the Gnostic Christians were completely different. They wanted to emphasize the critical importance of women. Everything is reversed. They're praised for eating from the tree of knowledge. And in the banned Gnostic texts, it's often the women who are the heroes. In fact, Jesus is often portrayed as the messenger or avatar of a divine being called Sophia, whose name means wisdom. There are many more examples, like Barbelo, who is often depicted as the powerful feminine principle of existence. Eve, who brought the power of epinoia, or intuition, to humanity, and Eve's secret daughter, Norea, who defeated God. I have videos on all of this on my channel, by the way. And of course, Mary Magdalene is presented as being the most important of all the disciples who Jesus loved the most and to whom he told the truth of existence. And this terrified those who wanted a patriarchal Christianity. So we find that in early Christianity, there was a battle between those who wanted to elevate the men and those who wanted to emphasize women. This battle was decided in 325 CE at the Council of Nicaea, where a council of bishops backed by the Roman Emperor decided what Christianity would be. This was the deciding moment when Christianity became firmly patriarchal. The Roman Empire was obsessed with power, war, and armies, and the church embraced that mindset. Patriarchal Christian orthodoxy was established, and with the power of the Roman Empire behind them, the church had all the views that conflicted with theirs, including the Gnostics, destroyed. Not only did the destruction of these texts destroy the feminine teachings of Gnosticism, but it also destroyed their secret teachings about the nature of reality, including the secret that Jesus told to Mary Magdalene. But luckily, thanks to those who likely risked their lives to preserve it, we now know something about what Jesus revealed to Mary, since many Gnostic texts, including the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, were discovered around 1945 buried near the tombs of ancient Egypt. So what 
what exactly did the Gospel of Mary Magdalene say and what was the secret given to Mary by Jesus? The Gospel of Mary Magdalene begins with the disciples asking Jesus if the material world will be destroyed. Cryptically, Jesus replies that all nature, all matter, and all creatures are actually connected as one and that all things will be returned to where they originated. Jesus then leaves, departing the disciples for good, and because he left them, the disciples start weeping since they don't know how to continue without him. But Mary, she stands up and comforts them, taking a leadership position and tells them not to weep. Here, Mary is beginning to take the place of Jesus in his absence. Remember this because it's important and we're going to come back to it in a minute. Now, one of the disciples, Peter, asks Mary to tell them the secret knowledge that Jesus revealed to her. And Mary begins to teach the disciples the true hidden nature of reality. Mary tells them that it's not matter, but mind that's the true nature of reality, that mind is the key to existence. And she begins to describe the hidden levels of reality that exist beyond matter. She discusses the journey that the soul must take to transcend the material realm by defeating desire and ignorance. The soul is even called the slayer of matter and conqueror of space. And because we have other Gnostic Gospels, we know that the Gnostics believed that all of us are divine. They believed that the material world is an illusion, a prison for the soul that must be transcended, and that ignorance keeps us from realizing our own divine nature. This was one of the Gnostics' great secrets that the church declared a heresy. Because if you want to control the people, the last thing that you want them to believe is that they're powerful and divine. Instead of faith, the Gnostics prized knowledge and praised the feminine power of what they called epinoia, which means purposeful thinking or intuition as being critical for realizing that matter is all an illusion and that mind is the true reality and that we are all divine. The church wants you to believe that you're flawed and sinful and need saving. For the Gnostics, only you can be your own savior by rising above ignorance and realizing your divinity through the power of your own mind. But not only does the Gospel of Mary reveal the secret of existence, but the book itself is a code. Let me explain. You see, orthodoxy hadn't been established yet, and early Christianity was divided on what Christianity actually was. Now, the Gnostics were known for writing in codes and metaphor. I believe that the disciples represent a different interpretation of Christianity, with each male disciple representing a patriarchal version of Christianity, while Mary represents the feminine Gnostic version of Christianity. The disciple who calls Mary a liar, Peter, represents what would ultimately become the modern church. Remember that the Gospel of Mary begins with Jesus teaching the disciples, but when Jesus leaves, they start to weep. They don't know what to do. What does Mary do? She steps up as the leader, comforting them, and takes the role of the new teacher as she reveals the secrets of the universe. In other words, she becomes the successor of Jesus. Mary is presented as the only one who truly understood Christ's teachings and that she should lead. What this story is trying to convey is that Gnosticism should be the true version of Christianity. We see that Peter defies Mary, calling her a liar, which matches up with the patriarchal church's hatred of the feminine, inclusive Gnosticism. And this wouldn't be the first time that the Gnostics have done something like this. They did something very similar in the banned Gospel of Judas. We can see this age-old battle played out all around us today. So many problems we face in the world right now are caused by the suppression of the feminine. We need a resurgence of the divine feminine to create a better world for all of us. And that's exactly what the Gospel of Mary is about. We need a world of unity, love, intuition, mind, and reason. Let's create that world together. If you thought that was interesting, check out my video on the banned Gospel of Judas, where Jesus reveals that God is actually the devil. It's intense. Now, my work, it's about bringing knowledge to everyone and helping raise the consciousness of humanity so we can create a better world. So please, subscribe now so we can spread this information. And I want to give a big shout out to everyone that supports on Patreon. If you ever felt like you've learned something or gotten something from my work, consider supporting on Patreon so I can continue to create better videos and reach more people.
I can't tell you how much it helps. You'll also get access to our weekly secret live streams, hidden Discord server at the Citadel, and the link will pop up right over here. Or you can also get loyalty badges by becoming a member on YouTube by hitting the join button below this video. Thank you, my friends.